Hey, I'm Mead. I'm a drawing professor, and I'm back with another critique video. Um, you know, something that I like to do in my spare time is just help some people out and, you know, teach some concepts along the way. So this is going to be a good example of um, what happens when you get when you're starting to get good and you find out that you can render really well, um, but then at the end something still um, is off but you're still proud of it. And um, I think everybody experiences that feeling. So, um, you know, grab out a sketchbook and draw along and take some notes. Um, this is a, a really nicely rendered drawing. Um, and I think the trick here is to um, put the rendering in your back pocket for a while and, and, uh, and come back to it in a, in a little bit. Um, in the meantime, there's some fixes to do that will help greatly. And I'm going to use a, uh, a color to kind of point out some, uh, some stuff to work on. Um, I think it's mostly just like proportional things, which is really not a big deal. Um, this stuff's like very easy to fix. So one thing that you'll notice is that if we take the eye line and run it across, the eyes don't meet up. Um, I think it's okay for one eye to be very squinty, right? And we also want to check the eye widths, right? So the eye widths are pretty good, and the distance between them is pretty good, right? The width proportions of the head are pretty good, um, you know, because we're seeing a little more of this left side, right? Uh, what you'll notice is that this shape of the nose and this shape of the nose don't really match. We're trying to, to turn the nose just a little bit, right? And see the corner of the nose and turn the nose this way. So yes, like this side is going to be smaller, but uh, in a slightly different manner, right? We want to see the the corner of this form and get some overlap, right? Okay, and then, you know, if we turn the nose, like, we don't want to go straight down with the cleft above the lip, right? We want that to go at a, at a little angle, right? Because um, what we're doing is we're taking the center line and we're turning it into, like, uh, a more complicated, like, center. Right, running it down the center of the face because you know we're trying to turn it to the side just a tad, right? And that turn aside just a tad is probably one of the more difficult situations, right, that we can be in because we're trying to um, convey something very subtle, right? Little turns. One of the thing alignments you can look for is um, the pupils tend to go directly over the edge of the mouth, right? And look for that there, find that there, you know, get ourselves some landmarks, right? Here, we want to take this shape and run it across on the other side, right? So we want to take our eye shape, we want to move our eye down over here, right? We still want to keep its like squintiness, but we want to regularize the eye. Largely keep this eye, I think. Maybe we'll turn it down a little bit. And then we'll put the you know pit of the eye a little bit far from this corner and we'll put it right at or right near the eye or the nose over here so that we get a little distance. So we're trying to turn the head a little bit, right? And then we're going to see the cheekbone. This, we're going to see this come in, probably bring the jaw in a little bit. We're going to overlap that at the chin, right? Basically create this plane right here. Okay, under that, we're going to have this plane come around. And then 
here we've got several things happening. We've got a plane that goes around here and bunches this up right there. See these subtleties merge and we have this larger plane that goes around the mouth, the whole muzzle. We want to figure out how that's going to work, generally speaking. We want to connect the jaw off of that, make sure we're getting some symmetry with the jaw. So we have a tilt to the head, right? Going like this. So we want the tilt of the jaw to be expressed as well. So maybe we need to readjust the mouth up a little bit too, right? And then pick our jaw, right? So I think we have here or here, so I think we just split the difference and go here. So our jaw is going to come up more like that and then down here. Okay. Now we've got this plane coming out here, right? For the cheekbone. And then a lot of times as people age, you'll start to see this plane emerge more. The flesh sag. So we can add that in too. So one of the things that you notice about uh, like procedurally is, is that I'm going like side to side and kind of trying to find symmetry. And uh, even though this is asymmetrical because we're turning it, I'm trying to find symmetry like side to side in the drawing and uh, pull out some anatomy side to side, right? So here I've got the bone ridge above the eyebrow here. I've got it here too, right? These bits of shadow are kind of indicating that. Here I've got the corner of the eye socket on either side, right? Okay. Um, and I've got the head going up here, right? The hairline this edge is getting hidden under the hair, but we kind of want to know where it is, right? To be able to determine, like, you know, how our proportions are doing. And then we can work on some planes of the hair, right? So we can take this plane of the hair, you know, and work that around. Chunk it out. Sections of hair are the way to go, right? So we've got a section here. Okay, then over on this side, we got a section of hair here, right? And a section behind it, so we might want to move a little bit so we get that good overlap happening. Then on into the neck. Since we've adjusted, we now have to adjust the neck, right? So the neck's going to come from around the jaw over here on this side, and we're going to move it over here a little bit. Okay. Then these like V-shaped lines are the sternocleidomastoid muscles, and then you have the um, Adam's apple and the throat coming down here creating this like cylinder, right? And then you have these, the shirt's going to wrap around, right? So we want this idea that it starts from behind and comes back around. So we want to exaggerate any kind of wrapping that might potentially happen, right? Make sure that it wraps around. So we start straight around that and you know, bend it as it comes around. 
Okay. There. All right. That's really the hard part of drawing, um, is this layout. The rendering part's much easier. Um, and, you know, this is basically this idea of, of you know, planar analysis, right? Um, so this is kind of what we're what we're left with, and then um, I think uh, going back in with it like this, we do want this eye to be squinty, right? Because that's part of the expression. Um, but I think what we've done is we've we've turned things a little bit better. Um, so now we can take. Uh, another layer in between here, and uh, and start to make some make some changes to this according to what we've done. So what I'm going to do is take this top layer and turn the opacity down, <coughs> and grab the colors that that you've got, and start to sort of paint in here more along the lines of the structures that that I've set up. Right. So what we have is we actually have a light source kind of coming from the right. Um, and so we need to kind of draw that out. And the indicators for that are just the subtleties, right? Um, you can see, like, you know, shadows developing here, right? And a shadow under here. And then we see, a, like, a highlight shape right here. So that suggests to me that we have, like, a soft light coming from the right. Okay. So all those lines that I've done are just total garbage, and we're going to ignore them. Um, now, what I like to do is start with big corners first. So take sort of a middle value and uh, run this on the big planes that, that I've set up, right? So this is kind of a big decision, right? Basically just saying, like, lights up and to the right. And so I'm just going to run light on, or run shadow on all this stuff. What I love about working this way is that the image develops early on really quickly, and then it looks crappy for a while and then it comes back to itself later. And if you do a line drawing like I've done, which kind of sets up a lot of the forms, this is going to be relatively easy to do. I'm even going to work into the hair just to indicate some darks, but that's going to have to get bumped down like pretty dark pretty dramatically later. But this is just to kind of like help me determine like just where the dark stuff is, basically. And since I've made drastic changes on this far side, I'll have to go in and you know indicate where those are. <coughs> I got a cast shadow under the hair here, so I want to do that too. Okay, so I turn off that, and um, you know, with the with what we've done, it's kind of sketched in that much. Um, it's lifted some darks in in, in your image, um, and started to change some of the shapes. So we're headed there, right? Okay turn these back on. So um, I'll need to basically be sure that I get start moving this eye downward, right? This eye is fairly dark in here. Put that shadow on that, right? The shadow under the ridge. And then I'm going to take some of the generic light tone and start to bump out the light areas and start to um, readjust the original drawing. You know, 
finding some of those planes. So here stuff's going to get a little bit strange for a minute because we're, we're having to move move some stuff around, right? Like, so we're trying to move the side downward. You know, move things around a little bit. Okay. Alright. So we've got this thing. We had to move this up a little bit. We're moving this chin around a little. So we're going to change the plane here. We're moving the lip some, so that's going to get lifted. This should feel pretty abstract right now, right? Because we're making these kind of drastic, dramatic changes. Okay, Probably lower the opacity a little bit too. All right. So we can also like move this eye just a little bit. I think we're going to tilt this eye down some, just a bit. Whoops. Get some red tone in. That's not good. Probably going to bring some shadow into there. Probably going to bring shadow into here too. Um, not too much though, otherwise it'll look bad. Um, okay, yeah. So we're pushing these pushing these shapes around, right? Um, probably need to push this nostril shape down some, uh, so that it's not super dramatic. And then we're probably going to need to push this nostril <coughs> totally around. Then we'll probably snag a start snagging a darker tone here to push in the cast shadow value. So change the nostril shape a little bit. Something more like that. Now it doesn't have to be like a super dramatic thing either, right? It can be very, it can be relatively subtle. And then this was an important tilt change here, right? That we're gonna move this around a lot. Tilt the lip over. That's probably too much tilt. We probably need to make it more subtle. Something probably more like that. That's a little better. It's probably too dark for now. Okay, those are some kind of dramatic changes. So we probably want to Decide on some shadow core tone here. Deepen up tones here into this cast shadow area. So what I'm thinking about here is, you know, the eye is a sphere. So I want to render it like a sphere. You know, I don't want to render it like an almond thing. So what I'm trying to do is draw out the, the sphericality of it, right? Because it sits in this socket down here. And then here, you know, I'm trying to draw out this structure where this line goes and shows off some age. So my shadow core is going to kind of like bend around all of these these structures here. Right? So that's kind of drawing out that structure a little bit more, which is nice. And then in the lip, right, I'm going to want to 
change that angle. According to what we set up here, right? Punch that in, and then under this lower lip, we're going to get a cast shadow. So moving this eye downward, right, we're going to get the shadow of the eye down here. And we got to work back and forth because we we need to make sure that this is absolutely symmetrical because if we don't you know it's always going to look bad and we're never going to be happy right there that's a little bit better um i need to just keep adjusting I need to adjust this side down more. See what that looks like. Yeah, it's a little better, right? And we're probably going to need to um, blend this tone a little more. So this kind of pulls together into one thing. And be sure that we're getting our proper shadow core. Around the nose as we moved it. Here we're kind of, so we're, we're getting the proportions regularized, I think. You know, that like moving the eye down, tilting the nose a little bit. It's bringing it to where we're more in that three-quarter realm. Um, the eyes still don't line up, so there's more adjustment to be done. Um, I think we may need to continue on that project of like going back to our original sketch. And I think what it is is this little teeny bit of dark that I put in. That lines up a little bit better, right? Okay. Then, planar analysis, right? We got a shadow core coming around here, right? So we got a plane change here, and we've got a dramatic plane change on the jaw, right? We're also changing the jawline entirely and pushing the jawline more dramatically to like this shape right here. Okay. So that's a very distinct differentiation. Um, and it's because we're trying to get this jaw to tilt, basically along with the rest of the head. So this is probably like one of the bigger changes that we're going to make. Right? Because that's a, that's a pretty dramatic shape change. You know? We want some cast shadow to happen under this, so we need to just like deepen this whole shadow down here, right? And we want this also to relate to the anatomy. So we've got the Adam's apple. We're going to go basically, you know, more or less straight across the Adam's apple because it's kind of a flat plane thing. And then we can, you know, wrap around the throat. 
transitionary things going on. Build our way over here. There. All right, we're getting there, right? We're losing your drawing, but we're gaining these, these shadows back and we're getting the tilt of the head captured a little more. Um, you know, we lost some eye width over here, so we need to bring this back, right? Um, we might want to bring, uh, before we do anything to like the pupil, we might want to bring a little bit of light into the eye over here and render out kind of like the sphere of the eyeball. And do the same thing over here too, right? We can catch light on the eye. Like we're rendering a ball. And then decide where he's looking, right? And where the pupil is and all that stuff. Um, I think that's one of the, the more fun opportunities you have when doing a portrait from reference is you can decide like what you want to do with the portrait, right? It doesn't have to be like, you don't have to stick to the reference as much. So here we got like half tones coming in here. Um, so we're transitioning and trying to get this plane to happen. So I think we, for now, we sort of dramatically make this plane lighter. So, yeah, we're finding this corner. Might want to like change the nose shape a little bit. Um, maybe soften the transition, right? So maybe even use like a soft round brush to transition, so that we get a softer edge automatically. Maybe not though. Maybe this isn't the way to go. I think we need to find a clear edge over here, right? So hard round brush, you know, average tone. We're changing the plane here, so we're transitioning. Right, we probably want to get a little bit of light on the far edge of the nose there. So that this transition makes sense. We may need a hair of cast shadow under this area where we transition around that muzzle shape, but it probably does not need to be that dark. So we're drawing out this form, right, to try to get the character of the lip. And then we want to do that on the other side too. So make sure that, that when we do that shadow that it kind of gets a bit of symmetry going in the shape of the mouth. What's fun about doing um, the mouth sometimes is that you uh, actually ignore the lips and you work around it and then the lips kind of take care of themselves. And we can push all this down into sh a little bit more shadow. Knowing that we're going to bring it back, right? If we need to. So we can push this tone down into like a more subtle half tone. <coughs> two. Right, we're getting probably a too dramatic of a chin there. Change that shape a little bit. And then we can, you know, now that now we can start like pushing some shadows down, right? And we can double check our sketch. Right, we're gonna 
move the jaw, remember? Make a big dramatic change there with this cast shadow. what we wanted to do is go for jaw symmetry. And here in this cast shadow we can kind of lose this edge a little bit and go to our silhouette level. And push the hair dark. So this gives us the opportunity if we want we can bump up the shadow core tone again. Make it darker. But we don't have to. We can, though. Because what's happening is the um, reflected light is now getting too bright. Right? So we may need to go in and bump down this whole shadow area. And do a darker tone. Yeah, it's getting pretty dramatic at this point. We want to be sure that we have that good hairline there, too. All right, we're going to get this dark in here. We're getting cast shadows down on, on the skin here. Okay, now we're making like really dramatic strides, I think, right? We have significant changes to the, uh, to the figure. Um, and I think what it's doing is it's bringing out some of these like major areas. You know, working into the light side, you know, we want to be sure that we get this cheekbone plane, right? Pretty bright and bump it up. And then we want to get like this plane right here, this flesh plane right here, and preserve a little bit of the shadow shape there, right? Um, make sure the nose is plenty bright and, and all that, and then we can leave some of the texture that she's done in the half tone to kind of turn it up, turn it back around, right? So, you know, what we are losing in terms of detail, we are gaining in terms of lighting and anatomical effects, I guess. So, um, like, you know, you pick what you, what you want to do, right? This is just, um, this is just an option, right? So here for the hair, what I'm going to do is go back to my original sketch and remember that I broke it down into sec sections and segments. So I've got this segment here, right, which I'm going to work little bit. This is probably going to be dark over here because it's largely in shadow. And I've got a super deep shadow here, right, in between these segments. And I'm going to go back up in value to this segment. And then this segment I've got some dark areas there, running it dark down there, and then this is all going to be very dark in here in this segment. And that's also going to help draw out our uh, cheekbone and the actual silhouette of the shape of the head here. Just want to be kind of careful with it in these segments. The plane shifting down here, so I need a shadow side here. And then it's shifting away from the light here, so I'm probably going to need a bit of shadow over here. And I'm going to pick up the highlight on that side of the hair over there to give that some dimension. This part's probably, I'm just going to leave simple. And then I might get like a little bit of a highlight on some of the hair over here. But 
most likely I'm just going to push it into the dark. Okay. So now we've worked into the hair. Things are getting really, really crazy and interesting. Um, I changed the the shape of the cheekbone a lot. So I want to come back over here and use the hairline to kind of um, draw out the cheekbone shapes. Make sure that they're fairly symmetrical. Kind of like that. That should make a little more sense. Then what I want to do is take my um, hair tone and run in with uh, run in with the highlights into the hair tone. Um, and this is this is fun right here. So what I do is I start working along the strands and creating highlights, and then what I'll do is I'll start to work those highlights this way. Along the strands or along the plane of this hair as it turns in space. So this is the ribbon concept. And then I definitely want some um, variation in this tone. So I'm going to need to bring some, some streaks through. Um, notice that it creates this really cool S-curve. And you know this can get fairly rendery, which um, can be tedious, but I think this speeds up the process a lot when you do it this way. And you can pick um, like how much, how big these highlights need to be to show off the forms without like distracting from other stuff. Like here, probably gonna need a good highlight here. Make this happen. Show this edge off. And this is the same concept that everybody uses for hair from anime to um, classical rendering. And just for Unity's sake, we can throw that in over here too. Maybe we're getting some magical highlighting over here. But I probably want to knock that down just a little bit because it's too too dramatic, right? Um, but it's a different piece of hair, so we want to be able to, to you know, make that change, right? And then here, you know, I can I noticed that this is probably too dark in here. So I can come back and just like, you know, knock that down a little bit. Work on that contrast. So, yeah, we've deviated like significantly from the original, um, the original shapes and everything. Um, I think we've kind of gained a, a fair amount. You know, there's more that we could do around the nose, probably. Um, you know, we want to look back at the original for the expression. It's you know, it's looking directly out at you, but maybe you don't want that, right? Maybe we need to change it. Um, because we've rendered it as a sphere first, we can now decide, you know, and I can do this on another layer. <coughs> we can make him look that way by putting the pupils like on the same part of the sphere. And, you know, just change the direction that he looks, right? So I can be looking off distant like GQ modely, right? Um, and then we can bring in that highlight back that we set up, right? Because we set up a highlight right here. And this highlight on the left side is probably too dark, so we can knock that highlight down. Okay, so I mean, yeah, we could take this further, right? We could work our way into the clothes and uh, and change the rendering of the clothes, um, which I would want to do. Um, but I think what it what it comes down to is that you know the work is done is done here, 
right? Um, this is this is the tough part. So I think spending some time here and doing the construction and doing some self-checking like that um, allows you to go in with the subtlety and sophistication that gets you there, right? And then you know details like the people are, are kind of just the um, the icing on the cake, right? And the hair and things like that that like show off kind of rendery stuff, um, you know. And then from here, you know, we could we could probably like nitpick and take this to finish. We could color it, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but I think the the main work in terms of like learning, you know, happens at that level that we're talking about um, in terms of just like doing that that breakdown of, um, of where all these planes go. Cause, and if you understand what those where those planes go, you're going to understand better where the light goes. You're going to understand how the structure gets symmetrical and that's going to allow you to like create expressions, you know. And now like we've we've done all this work and we've kind of like actually devolved like evolved this expression into something different than what um, what we had before, right? <coughs> We're actually getting a little bit of a smile here. So we could like, you know, do some stuff to just like, you know, exaggerate the expression. You know, it's still a subtle expression, right? But if we do this, right, um, which is basically like adding in an S curve, right? We deepen up this shadow here and we, uh, we give them a little bit of like a, a a smile, and you know now that now that's happening, like that's kind of getting into the point where rendering goes into content, right? And that's where I think artwork gets interesting is um, when you take the the execution into levels where you're now exploring what things mean. So I hope you enjoyed this, um, you know. We will stop there because this can go on for ages and ages and ages. But I think that gets the concept across. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this and, and uh, the use of the image. So um, take care.